everyone, and welcome to Piqua High School, where tonight it's number one versus number two as the Marion Local Flyers tackle the Ansonia Tigers in round four of the Ohio High School football playoffs. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Mark Shine and our entire WSN crew. And Mark, since the polls have been closed at the end of the regular season, everybody's waited for this one, one versus two. Yeah, Marion Local, of course, was the poll champ, obviously coming off state championships as they have and going undefeated this season. You can see why. And Sonia comes in, no, they're 13 and 0. They did get two first place votes this year. They've got a couple of guys who were a, a Southwest District Player of the Year, although one significant injury. It's a good Ansonia Tiger football team. Yeah, and Mark, it's no secret what Ansonia does. They love to run the football. We're not going to pretend that we're going to do anything other than run the football. Well, you, you've seen uh, the full house tee backfield, three guys in the backfield, double tight end, and they'll just try to move you enough to pick up uh, three or four yards on every play. They've got an outstanding running back that we'll talk about uh, as we get into our game keys in a moment. But it's a football team. They don't throw the football. They don't uh, kick extra points. They go for two every chance they get. If it's fourth down, they're going to go for it if they have any semblance of chance. Last week, they did it four times against St. Henry. It is a different type of football team than we typically see in Northwest Ohio. And Mark with Marion Local, it's business as usual. This is an absolute machine. Multiple state championships. They just keep doing those things. You and I had them last week. What a drive they had to, to, to basically seal that game last week. Nothing changes. Uh, Minster had him at what? It was tied. It was 14-7. It was yeah. seven so all early. It was 14-7 at halftime. Marion Local. Marion Local goes on a huge drive in the late in the third quarter, in the beginning of the fourth. Then Marion Local gets a pick six. They win 28-7. But they did it with their defense and being consistent on offense and not turning the football over. It's Marion Local. It's in Sonia. It's week four of the high school playoffs. You'll have all the action coming up next right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Alexander Field here on the campus of Piqua High School, where tonight the Marion Local Flyers tackle the Ansonia Tigers. And, Mark, let's take a look at the keys for the game tonight for both these squads. Well, Danny, a couple years ago, Megan Sherrick, who does a lot of work with us at WSM, we were talking. I said, Megan, I can take the next three songs off the radio <laughs> and make those game keys. So tonight it is Wanted Man, our first game key, and that's going to be Keegan Weiss from for the Hansonia Tigers, 347 carries this year, 2,487 yards. He scored 40 touchdowns. He is the offensive player of the year in the Southwest Conference. He will be a wanted man. If you are a Marion local flyer, you want to get him stopped. And if you're a uh, Ansonia Tiger, you want to see what he can do with the football. And then our second one was Freebird. Well, birds are flyers, right? Absolutely. Yeah, right. And how about that flyer named Victor Holscher flying through the back of your secondary? Ooh, he's a good one. Or running back punts and kickoffs. He's got great speed, great hands, and he will be a weapon for the Marion local flyers tonight. And finally, running down a dream. If you are the Marion local flyers, this is yet another opportunity for you to get to the state semifinals. And if you are the Ansonia Tigers, you have never won a regional championship. Your dream is, let's get a win over the number one team in the state and move on to the state semifinals next week. You sound like Casey Casey, Mark. There you go. <laughs> this is going out from a boy from Marion Local to a girlfriend, so yeah. <laughs> I give it a seven, but you can't dance to it. <laughs> and <laughs> thanks for watching American Bandstand, there ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we are underway here. Marion Local will kick the ball off, and Sonia is deep to take this one, and we got a dandy ahead of us, folks. Get buckled in. Here we go. The kick is taken deep into the end zone, and they'll go for a touchback. Danny, it is 48 degrees. The wind is blowing between 11 and 12 miles per hour. Most of the time, it blows from our particular position straight across the field towards Ansonia. But occasionally, it swirls a little bit, too, and I think that's a big factor when, think, and yeah. not being able to figure out exactly what the wind's doing this evening. Absolutely. Tonight's Marion Local Premier sponsor is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. So here come the Tigers from Ansonia, led by quarterback Nick Burns at 5'11", 168-pound senior, 32 of 58, 459 yards, one touchdown, and three interceptions. And they'll go right away to big number eight, Keegan Weiss. Mark, we've talked about him all pregame. He's a dandy. He, he, he carried the ball, what, 34 times last week, 46 the week before. I read an article about, article about him this week. He said, well, I lift weights every day at 6 a.m. I should be in shape. <laughs> and he's, he's a linebacker as well. He's, he's averaging about almost 200 yards a game on the ground. Really, really good back. Got seven on the first down. Over 2,400 yards for that young man this yep. year and 40 touchdowns. That is just it's staggering. Everybody knows you're carrying the football, and he still does it. <laughs> Absolutely. So here comes uh, Ansonia. They'll go uh, three in the backfield. They'll hand the ball to the first man up, and 
Gain of about maybe half a yard. That was Ethan Riker. We should mention Garrett Stallman, who was, had been the second leading running back with almost 600 yards, is out with an injury, and that, that's a crippling thing. He's also yeah. was defensive player of the year in the Southwest Conference or Southwest District, and that will be felt even more so in his running game. Here our first third down of the night, third and three from the 27. Our instant replay sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering need. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So here we go, third down, two in the backfield with Bruns, and they stuff him. They stuff him. Nothing doing that Marion local defense. And, Mark, oh you've my. seen that all year long. That Marion local front is really nasty. Well, you know, they've got three players themselves who were all district in the northwest part of the state. Landing Arling was a co-defensive player of the year from his linebacker position. Uh, so was uh, Simon Partington. Drew Laws was second team uh, northwest district, and they just stuffed at that time, lost a yard. And so Marion local will go back in pump formation back deep for the Flyers. Number two, Victor Holscher, and number 15, Griffin Bruns. And we have talked about Victor Holscher. Folks, on this carpet, this kid is electric. He has speed to burn and a kind of a high snap there. It's blocked. The punt is blocked, and it's going to roll. It's picked up by Insonia. And I believe he may have got a first down, Mark. It looked like he might have. That time they used Keegan Weist, kind of the rugby-style punt, and Mary Local was on top of it. But the punt was blocked, and they will keep possession of the football. They will keep possession. It almost looked like, and we'll have to look at the replay, it almost looked like the Marion local kids didn't uh, didn't know it was blocked or just the ball just stayed on the turf and nobody went for it. And so they will get a first down at their 30-yard line. First down sponsor tonight is Holman Insurance. First and 10 from the 39-48 to go. Danny Overgan, Mark Shine from Alexander Stadium here at the campus of Piqua High School. Boy, there's been some... Oh. Fine football players on this field, Mark. <laughs> you know, when you go pick with Sydney Wapak, you've got three of the best high school football fields uh, in the state. Yeah, this, this facility is yes. just impressive, I'm telling you. Beautiful, beautiful facility. So here come the Tigers as they try to go back at Marion Local again. They'll go second man up, and he's getting nothing. And that Marion Local defensive line, two plays in a row with no gain. Tried to go off the right side of formation as they did on the opening play of the, the game tonight, but that time Marion Local's ready for it. Back to the 30 yard line and no game. I'm trying to identify this offensive set here, Mark, with three well, tight in the backfield. It's, it's it's a it's a full house T backfield. This is the old Woody Hayes. I was gonna say stuff that Nebraska you saw. used to run it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you do a lot of things out of it. Obviously, you're not gonna throw the ball out of, which they don't do very often. Their quarterback on the season. Nick Bruns has thrown the ball just 58 times on the season. A little eye, too. Power eye. Bruns will go under center. He'll hand it to the first man up. And he's going to pick up about three yards. Nice gain there for the Tigers. Jake Henderson, the ball carrier for the Ansonia Tigers. Ansonia comes in, Mark, 13-0, 8-0 in the Western Ohio Athletic Conference. Mark, they've got three shutouts this season, so a nice defensive football team. It is. And part of that, obviously, when you, when you run the football as well as they do, you keep your opponents off the field. I mean, we're already got almost four minutes into this game, and Mary Loco hasn't seen the football yet, and that's what they want to do. Yeah. And they, they will go for it on fourth down. So this, this, this gets even closer on third. We'll have to consider, consider what Coach Hall might do. We'll go third and six from the 34-yard line, 8.05 to go. And they'll swing it out to the left. And they're going to pick up a first down. They did. A nice run by number 21, Zane Henderson for the Tigers. Little option play that time. Our home insurance first down out to the 45-yard line. So they picked up 11 and got a first down. Mark, I looked at their uh, conference stats online. And correct me if I'm wrong, for the conference, did they rush for 487 yards a game? A game. That's what it said. <laughs> now, that's in conference games only. And sure. I, you know, if you look at their conference, it's not a max schedule if you no. prefer. But still, you put those kind of numbers up, you're doing something right. Absolutely. Well, they're moving the ball right now. This is their second possession. The first one we talked about, the punt was blocked, but they picked it up. So, here comes Bruns under center. They're going to hand off. We're off the right side in a nice gain of about three yards. That's Keegan Weiss again. Landon Bowman, number 21. No, excuse me, Zane Henderson, number 21. Got a good kick out block that time on the, the end of that side, and they got the ball up to the 48-yard line. You know, Mark, you and I have done a lot of Marion Local games, and the thing that I really like about Marion Local – they make adjustments. When they yep. see that there's an issue anywhere, they will make those adjustments. And, and and honestly, their kids pick up those adjustments as well as anybody we've seen. Well, they give up the, the Marion Local Flyers just 58 yards per game on the ground. See what kind of play they come up with here on second down. So here comes Nick Burns. He's going to go yeah. under center. Trying to get Ethan Reichert where he belongs. Keegan Weiss is behind him. Reichert's back there. They're going to pitch it out to Reichert. He's going to go to the left side. 
and close to the first down marker. He's going to be taken down and hit hard by that Marion local defense, leading the charge for the Flyers, number three, Carter Jones. Kind of blew it up in the backfield. The defensive end got out and knocked down. The blocker was supposed to get wide. Going to make it third and five. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Structure is our scoreboard sponsor. It's a play in from the sideline from Zane Henderson from Coach Adam Hall. They averaged 39.4 points per game, 335. 0.8 yards per game on the ground. <laughs> That's getting after it, isn't it? It is. Here comes Burns as he'll go under center. They're going to – first flag of the night. Yep. It looks like a false start on the end Sonia offensive line. And, and that's something that they can't afford to do. A team that doesn't want to get behind the chains, uh, take them back five, makes it, uh, you know, going to be eight, uh, third and about, what, uh, eight? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mark. You look at Ansonia, we've talked oh, about their stats. Ten. This is the kind of team that wants to go on 12, 13, 14 yes. play drive. Keep Marion Local's offense off the field, wear them down a little bit, if that's possible. If that, that's possible. And that, we talked about uh, they're trying to get the football into the hands of Keegan Weiss as many times as they can on the season. Sweet. It is to actually third and 10, Danny. Third and 10 from the 45-yard line. Burns goes under center. Here they come. They're going to go Weiss right off the left side, and he's going to pick up the first down. He goes down the left side. He cuts back to the middle, and a nice gain of about 25 yards for Keegan Weiss. Flyers blitzed up the middle that time. He got off the left end and made some good yardage that time, picking up yet another home and insurance first down. You know, you watch him run, Mark, and he's not real shifty, but my goodness, can he find the holes. Well, Keegan Weiss listed at 5'10", 205. Got a good burst that time off the left defensive end. He's a strong young man as well. Counting the, the two plays combined, the, the blocked punt and so on, this will be the 11th play of this possession. So here comes Burns. He's under center. He's got Keegan Weiss directly behind him. He's going to pitch it to Weiss on the right side. He's going to get ahead of steam. Goes around the 30-yard line, back to the 25-yard line, and a nice pick of about seven yards. Time he ran right side. This is man-on-man -on -man blocking. The center is Peyton Kelch. He wears number 62. The right guard is Asher Shives. He wears 66. Uh, the right guard is Jacob Schmidtmeyer, Jared Schmidtmeyer. He wears 75. And then you got the left tackle, Devin Geyer, and the right tackle, Jordan Troutwine. And they're just moving some people around a little bit right now down to the 27-yard line. Yes, they are. So we'll go second and three from the 27 after a nice seven-yard pickup from Keegan Weiss. And uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I got to believe Weiss is going to carry the ball a lot here. There he goes right up the middle. Yeah. He is stuffed, stuffed right up the middle by the defensive front for Marion Local. Yeah, first guy on the contact that time was number 46, and that is Ethan Heitkamp. No room to run that play. We've talked about Ethan Heitkamp quite a bit, Mark, on the offense. My goodness, 19 touchdowns this year, and he is a load. This is uh, certainly four-down territory for the Ansonia Tigers as they need a couple of yards here for a first down from the Flyer 26-yard line. And you, you are correct, Mark. you got to believe it's two-down territory. Third and two from the 26. They do not kick extra points. They go for two whenever they get that opportunity, so that's not in their option. They're going to go off the right side. And they are close to a first down. Number 25, Ethan Reichert with the carry. And if he's not got a first down, he's awful close. He is just short. They gave him a yard, I think, to the 25-yard line. And now we're looking at fourth and one. So here we go. First big decision of the game. Fourth and one from the 25. And, folks, if you've not seen a team run the ball like Ansonia does, that clock's going to roll, and it's, this game's going to move along. Well, they've I can already had the that. football, Danny, for eight and a half minutes. <laughs> I know, right. <laughs> And this is what they want to do. So Absolutely. here we go. Fourth and one from the 25. Burns is under center. He's got Ethan Reichert in the backfield. Also Keegan Weiss. He's going to go Weiss. And he's got it. A first down for the Ansonia Tigers. That he did off the right side. They seem to like that particular formation and going right out of it. Takes it to the 23-yard line. Picking up a home and insurance first down. That'll make it first and 10 from the 23. Play number 13, I believe, correct, Mark? Am I, am I, am I uh, math Well, good? it depends. <laughs> if, you, if you count the, the punt, that, that was four, and this will be the 11th play of this drive, so I, I'm not sure exactly how you, how you figure that in with the punt situation, <laughs> but they, <laughs> let's put it this way. They had the football the whole quarter. That's right. Here we go, first and 10 from the 23. Burns is going to hand off to Reichert, and he is getting nothing. He tried to get a little counter option there on the left side, and he got nothing going. 
Beautiful yeah, to night tonight. 23 yard line. Mark yeah. talked about it earlier. The wind's blowing quite a bit, uh, but no rain, which is good. That's a good thing. No snow. And uh, on, look, Mark, I love the fact that when you get into these playoff situations, you're playing on turf and and nice fields, and, and there's no disadvantage for anybody. Yeah. Here we go. Second and eleven from the 24. 2:06 to go. Clock continues to run. 0-0 zero, zero here. Marion Loke with a little flinch there, and they try to get Weiss in the backfield, and no doing there, and here comes the fly again. He was able to get through that first arm tackle, and let's see what the penalty is. They're going to go holding against the Ansonia Tigers. So uh, Burns does a little pitch to the right side. Keegan Weiss picks up maybe two yards, but there's going to be a holding, and that will back him up. And during that uh, time, they're going to get a meeting with Coach Koenig, the defensive coordinator, and, and discuss what they want to do with this running game. They huddled up over there. Didn't call a timeout, yeah. but they ran well, across him. I, I don't blame yeah. him. I'd do the same thing. Sure. <laughs> Had a little bit of time to, to do so with the uh, penalty situation. So we're back to the 33-yard line. And, again, that's the type of play that makes a difference for the team that wants to pound it and ground it. Huge play there. Holding second and 20 from the 33. Burns will go under center. He's got two receivers off to the left, which we haven't seen all night. They're going to pitch it back to Riker. Riker goes off the left side, gets a nice block out front. He's across the 30, the 25, and he'll be pushed out of bounds. Great block by the wide receiver on the far left side. Yeah, got a block on the, the linebacker trying to get out and make a play. Put the football to the 26-yard line, so they got seven of them back. Mark, when you're playing a team like Ansonia, how much do you prepare during the week for the pass? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think the, the issue with, with Marion Local in that situation is they've seen enough different things sure. in the MAC that they will go with what uh, the Ansonia Tigers do base-wise and then you know, have to figure it out after that. We'll go third and 13 from the 26 as the Ansonia continues this drive with 1.43 to go. Burns will go under center. He's going to pitch it out to Weiss. Weiss gets ahead of steam, and he's taken down for a gain of about two yards. Nice job there by big number 59 for the Flyers. That is Kyle Ungren. We've called his name a few times over the last few weeks. Yeah. And the first team all uh, Northwest District on the offensive side of the ball. And here we are at fourth and about 10. Fourth and 10 from the 23-yard line. Clock continues to run 120 as we go at the end of the first quarter. Here. Still tied at zero. Burns will go under center. Record off to his right. Weiss directly behind him. He's going to fake the pa or the handoff, and he's going to, oh, just overshoots his intended target of Keegan Weiss, and it looked like he had it and dropped it on fourth and eight. Well, that's the play. We watched him run in there pregame. They just try to get him out of the backfield and, and make whatever he can out of that. Weiss has just a couple of catches this season for 27 yards and just tried to get it to him. He's pretty well covered, but Marion Local will finally get to football here <laughs> with say. exactly a minute to go. There's 60 seconds to go in the first quarter, and the Marion Local Flyers are just now getting the football. And, and it appears as though with the wind just blowing around, it might actually be at their back right now. It, it's just kind of a swirling type thing. Yeah, and when the, <laughs> the Flyers led on the field by number seven quarterback Justin Nolf. 23 touchdown passes this year and only five interceptions. He's going to throw over to the right side of the field across the 30. The reception is made by number 10, Andrew Pullman, junior wide receiver, hauls it in. Again, Justin Knopf, 109 of 164 for 1,768 yards, 23 touchdowns and five interceptions, and they were worried about replacing their quarterback yeah. last year. Andrew Pullman, 23 of those catches for 361 and four scores. Knopf is in the gun. He's got two receivers to the left. He's got a man in motion. That is Kyle Otte, and that's who he's going to throw the ball to on the left side. There goes Otte. He gets down the sideline. If he gets away, he can cause you trouble, and he's pushed out of bounds. Nice pitch and catch there from Knopf to Kyle Otte. And boy, we talk about Kyle Otte. He is a do-everything for the Flyers. You know, he missed a major portion of the season with a, with a knee injury type thing. He's been back the last, what, four or five weeks. He seems to be getting better each week, as you might expect. We've got a flag down, though. Oh, we do have a flag down. You're right. Holding against yeah. Marion Local, so a big play is negated there. That's three flags we've had tonight, and two of those are holding. This one's going to take it back to the 28. You believe so? I believe so. 21 seconds to go here. Still not at zero. And the Flyers will run a stable of running backs. Kyle Otte, Andrew Pullman, Ethan Heitkamp, Victor Holscher. They will bring them all day, and they will just keep coming. So here's Knopf in the gun. There goes Kyle Otte off to the left side. Knopf's going to pass the ball. He looks down the middle. 
and he's picked off across the middle. And our first turnover of the night, intercepted by number 20 for the Ansonia Tigers, and that is Jacob Schmidtmeyer. Stepped right in front of the pass. Really well, well played defensively, so Mary Loco is going to get two plays in the opening quarter. And this is exactly what you want if you're Ansonia. Get a turnover, get some momentum, keep the ball away from Marion Local. And the football is at the 45-yard line, so they're already in plus territory. So here come the Tigers with 15 seconds to go. They'll go two in the backfield behind Burns. Burns is going to swing it out to, to the lead back. That is Keegan Weiss, and he picks up about two yards, maybe three yards. And that will do it for one quarter of play. After one quarter of play from Alexander Stadium here on the campus of Pickle High School, we are knotted at zero. We'll have second quarter action right after these messages. We're back at Piqua, where tonight's touchdown sponsor is Innovative Office Solutions, your local furniture expert. Visit us at iosinc.com. Danny? Yeah, Danny Holbrook, Mark Shine from Alexander Stadium. Thank you, Mark. Great job. You sound like you've done a few games a time or two. Oh, yeah. Old people. <laughs> well, I appreciate hey, you, sir. How, how brutal is this? We're sitting on the 50-yard line in a nice, warm press box. We, we had a great feed. We did. <laughs> And we're watching two really good football teams play. <laughs> we're getting paid for it. Yeah, well, it's unbelievable. Well, <laughs> yeah, coffee money, but that's okay. That's all right. Hey, I like coffee. Oh, yeah, me too. I got all one right. set right here. <laughs> Second and seven from the 42. We'll get back to the football game here. And Sonia doing a great job of keeping that ball away from Mary Local. Burns will go under center. He's got Reichert and Weiss in the backfield with him. He's going to throw the ball to the left side. He's got a completion out there. And he goes across up to the 40-yard line. Trevor Hemrick on the reception there. The Flyers, who just don't respect the pass game, had one defensive back out covering two flankers on that side of the field, made a good play on it. They picked up two yards on the play and looking yeah, at third down. And, you're, you know, we've talked about this. They're going to have to throw the ball to win this yep. game tonight. Marion Local's going to stop the run at times. Now, so far, so good for Antonio. Third and six from the 41. Burns will go under center. Reichert and Weiss in the backfield with him. He's got two receivers split out to the right. Here they come. And they'll go off the left side in a nice run there by number 21, Zane Henderson. Another running back in that stable. They are so backs. close, Danny, to popping it against that blitz. Yeah, you're right. And that time they were able to get the football to the 37. So they picked up about four, but they were close. Fourth and two from the 37. They're going to go for it again. They've went for it every time they've been at fourth down. So Marion Local, see if they can hold strong here. 10.52 to go here in the second quarter. Converted all four fourth down last week against St. Henry. That's a good St. Henry defense, yeah, Mark. We had was. them earlier this yep. year. Here's Burns in the backfield. He's going to keep it himself as he goes around the left end. And I don't know if he got it, Mark. He had to get no. to the 35, and I don't know if he got it. He was stretched out that time. Nick Burns goes 5'11", 168, and they put the football down in a rather advantageous spot, I thought, for the Ansonia Tigers. It is right yeah. near the first down. We have to bring the sticks across. Mark, they're going to take a timeout to get the sticks there. We're going to take a timeout here in the booth when we come back. More action here on WSN. Well, that roar you hear is the Marion Local Flyers as they have held and they get the ball back on fourth and two. And Sonia comes up inches short, Mark, and we, we couldn't tell from up here. Well, I tell you what, we, that's right. We couldn't tell. Uh, the Coach Hall from the, the Ansonia Tigers, he thought it was a first down. The official looked and looked and looked and finally said, nope, it is inches <laughs> short. But it took them a long time to get that one figured out. And the Flyers will hold. This will be just their third play of the opening half. Second possession. They blocked the punt. They uh, and Sonia got the punt. They give it a first down. Marion Local gets the ball. They throw an interception. So I gotta believe Marion Local is gonna give you a heavy dose of the run right here. I got Audie in the eye. So here come the Flyers, first and ten for the 35. They'll pitch back to Audie. Audie goes around the right side, tries to cut it back to the middle, and is gonna get a gain of about two and a half, three yards. There you see Kyle Otte, one of the few backs for the Marion Local Flyers. As I said earlier, they'll run four to five backs, including Justin Knopf, who has 598 rushing yards on his own credit. Well, as a quarterback, he leads the team in rushing, and <laughs> that's partly because they have those other backs so evenly spread True. out. 
So they don't have a, quote, feature back. Here comes Marion Local. They'll spread two out, one to the right, one to the left. One. Victor Holscher clear out to the right side. They'll go up the middle for a gain of about three. Right up the middle there. Let's see if I can make out that. Heitkamp. Ethan Heitkamp. Yeah. We talked about Ethan Heitkamp earlier on defense. Ethan Heitkamp with 19 touchdowns this year. Listen, when he gets close to the end zone, he smells it. Third and four from the 41-yard line. 9.36 to go. Knopf is in the gun. He's got a single set back off to his left, and he's got a receiver to the right and clear out on the left side. And we've got a stoppage in play. We've got a timeout, Marion Local. Timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout on the booth. You're watching High School Football, WOSN. Welcome back to Alexander Stadium here, Piqua High School. 9.26 to go. Marion Local knotted up at zero with Ansonia. We're at third and four from the 41. Knopf is in the gun. He's got a single back to the right. He's got one in the slot and two receivers clear off to the right side. He's going to hand No, he's going to keep it himself. Knopf is tied up in the backfield. He's going to make through, and there's a flag on yep. the play. And you got to believe that's holding mark where they throw the flag. Well, they pulled number 54 that time, and Luke Webker, the only senior on the starting line. And I'm not sure whether he's the guy who got caught or not, but he got a good block. Yeah, they're going to get uh, Marion Local another with penalty. the hold. So another penalty will push it back. And right now, this Marion Local offense is sputtering, to say the least. They'll replay the third down with 9.21 to go. Good play call, though. It was a safe play. Just didn't, you know. Uh, well, you saw the athleticism of Knopf yeah. as he goes through the middle. And boy, he's got those long legs, and he really stretched that play out. A nice job by that, man. But we're going third and 14 from the 31. They'll spread out wide to the right side. Victor Holscher and Andrew Pullman, two key receivers for the Flyers. Knopf is in the gun. He'll take the snap. He looks across the field. He's going to throw deep down the right side. He's got a man out there, and it is deflected down. No completion there, and we'll go to fourth down. Wyatt Spencer knocked it down on the incompletion. A good spot out there to play against Pullman. Yeah, they tried to they just ran Pullman on a go route. It was basically a one-on-one -on -one and a great job by the defensive back from Ansonia. Well, this is the second time that a penalty has interfered with a Marion local drive, and they're going to have to punt it away. And now, look, then don't look now, Mark, but they've got Keegan Weiss back in punt formation, okay. and he is an absolute home run hitter if he catches this ball. Punt is up, and it is a spiral high enough. They're going to let it bounce at the – 45, and it'll go almost to the 36-yard line. That's where Ansonia will take over with 8.46 to go. Ansonia defense helped off by a penalty each time by Marion Local. has got a couple of stops, one on the interception they had, that time forcing a three-and-out punt. The Tigers to get here, Mark, they defeated Lachlan 52-7, Mechanicsburg 34-8, and as you said earlier, St. Henry 20-13. And they've already taken on one max school, and here they try to take another one down. So Burns will go under center. He's got two backs in the backfield with him. They'll pitch it back off. The ball's, ball's deflected, loose. and it's on the turf, and it is recovered by Nick Burns. That could have been disaster and exactly what Marion Local was hoping for. Well, they tried to pull number 70, Devin Geyer, the, the left tackle, to get out in front of it, but the pat ball was uh, touched or deflected in some way. Certainly didn't get to the ball handler on in con, uh, the proper position, so they lost about four to the 33. That'll bring up second and 14 from the 33-yard line, 8.22 to go. Game is just flying by here. No score on the structure scoreboard tonight, and, I, and I'm shocked. I'm just going to be honest with you. As much as these teams put up points, I'm yeah. shocked. You'll be able to stop at Lee's famous recipe <laughs> on the way home. <laughs> Plenty of time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here come the Tigers. They'll go right up the middle, and there's another flag yep. on the play right in the middle of that line. you got to believe it's holding on Ansonia, and they try to run Keegan Weiss up the middle. Officiating crew, the head referee is Brandon Leith. His crew is Christopher Bentley, Scott Sturgill, Michael Lemons, Justin Mameister, and Phil Wilson. This is a blended crew. Guys have been voted into this spot, so we're regional final work. We're getting into some of the best of the best. Came up here a couple years ago and watched the Coldwater Cavaliers advance on this field. So we've seen several Mac schools play here. It'll bring up second and 24 from the 23-yard line, 7.52 to go. Burns goes under center. He's got two receivers off to the left. He's going to throw the ball to the left. He's got his man out there and quickly taken down for not much of a gain at all. You saw the 
quick thinking of the Marion local defensive back is there Johnny uh, on the spot. That was Mitchell Randley. You could see he's the outside linebacker on that side. He was doing a dead sprint to the football and held him to a no gain. <coughs> Excuse me. 7.28 to go. Third and 24 from the 24-yard line. Boy, a tough spot here for the Ansonia Tigers at third and 23, Mark, and you don't throw yeah. the ball much. And, and you know what? If you're Ansonia, are you going to take a chance and put it up in the air? You're playing well defensively. Get what you can get. Maybe punt it away. Absolutely. Certainly don't want to give the football to Flyers in this spot of the field. Burns is going to hand the ball off to Weiss. Weiss goes off the right at nothing. And I don't know if he gained a yard, Mark. He's behind the line of scrimmage. And that will bring up fourth and about 22. That was Pullman made that tackle, got in the backfield, cut his legs out from underneath him, and you're right, back to the 23-yard line. See what type of punt they do this time. Weiss is in punt formation. And they've used another punter on the season, Jacob Schmidtmeyer, but uh, Weiss is a danger uh, to punt as well as I'm – he's not going to fake in this particular spot, but he can. They'll go Griffin – excuse me, Burns and Victor Holscher back deep. And they want to keep it away from Holscher. Got a good rolled. bounce. Yeah, they got a great bounce and went out about the 44-yard line. That's where Marion Local will take over with 6.26 to go. Defense held for Marion Local that time. Again, a fumble in there, a penalty in there. Check out our website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WSN.TV. So nothing on the scoreboard. These two powerhouse programs, uh, everybody waited for this one. It's one versus two, and we've got a dandy here. It's zeros on the board. Marion Local goes at the 41, first and 10, 626 to go. Knopf is in the backfield. He's got number 46 off to the right side. That is Ethan Heitkamp. Knopf's going to keep it himself, and he gets a nice big gain of about 20 yards. Boy, you saw the burst there, Mark. Well, he really turned the Jets on that time. He got that block on the route side of the formation, but you mentioned from the, his blocking back, number 46, high camp, and they just powered the ball on a home and insurance first down to the 42. Got to bring up first and 10 from the 42, and that's their best play of the night so far, Mark, and uh, maybe some life. Though, well, we, we, we've talked Flyers. about it before when Coach Goodwin said, gee, we didn't know he could run because we don't let our quarterbacks <laughs> run in, in middle school. Well, he certainly proved he can. <laughs> first and 10 from the 42, and off is in the gun. He's got a receiver to the left, one in the slot, and one to the right. He's going to throw the ball to the left side, and he's got his man out there, and the reception's made by number two, Victor. Holster, and there you see Holster's first catch of the night, and that's going to bring up another first down. Well, you can see how dangerous he is. He made the first guy miss after he caught the pass out here on the left side of the formation. Made the first guy miss, got down to the 26-yard to the line. Yet another first down for Holman Insurance. Another Holman Insurance first down. So we'll go first and 10 from the 26, 5.37 to go. Get close to that red zone. Yes, they are. Perfect opportunity for the Flyers as Knopf is in the gun. He's got a single receiver to the right, and the Flyers are going to take a timeout. With 5.28 to go, Mark, we're going to take a timeout. We come back with further action right here on WSN. Back here at Alexander Field with 5.28 to go. The Flyers driving. First and 10 for the 26. An awful go under center this time. And another flag comes down. So uncharacteristic there for the Marion local Flyers as another flag falls. And they're going to call a false start against the Flyers. Well, you could see the coach wasn't happy when he called the previous timeout. Right. Somebody had either lined up incorrectly or the formation was wrong or something. And uh, that time, then you come out of that timeout and you get a five-yard penalty. But it did get Holscher back in the game, too. So Knopf will go into the gun. He's got Adi off to his left, Heitkamp to the right, two receivers off to the right side. Adi's going to go in motion. Knopf's going to go to the right side, looks to throw the ball, goes to the middle, and he's got Victor Holscher out there for a nice completion and another home and insurance first down. And they're inside the red zone, too, Danny. That's right. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available, 1-800-776-3097. Burke Petroleum is our red zone sponsor. Flooded the zone that time, and he found Holscher. So they'll go power eye from in this formation, Mark, with first and 10 from the 15. Knopf's going to swing it back to Audi. Audi dances back to the middle. 
Nice hole there, and he goes closer to the goal line to about the five-yard line. A fantastic run by Kyle Otte. When they're in that eye formation, he's about eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. He takes that to pitch, and he's got plenty of opportunity to use his vision and find where he wants to go with the football, and they are down to the seven. So the farthest any team has driven tonight, the Flyers are second and two from the seven-yard line. 4.38 to go. Knopf is under center. He's going to go high camp up the middle, and why not? He's going towards the goal line, and he is in. He is in for an innovative office solutions touchdown. What do you do when you get near the goal line? Give you it hand the ball <laughs> off to Ethan Heitkamp. Tell those big offensive linemen up front to make some space. Heitkamp gets in the end zone. That's double. That's uh, that's in the 20s now, Mark. Uh, yeah. His teen years are over. That's touchdown <laughs> number 20. 20. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, nice job there by the Flyers as they get on the scoreboard to make it 6-0 with 4.31 to go. They'll try to tack on the extra point. Number 11 for the Flyers. This is Carson Bills comes out. Try to tack that point on. A little high high snap, and that affected the kick, but he got Ooh, it through. Still got a line th drive to him. How about that? My goodness. That was a tough one. With 4.31 to go, the Marion Local Flyers, the number one team in the state of Ohio, they take a 7-0 lead. Well, they're playing Welcome to the Jungle. It feels like a jungle right now. The Marion Local Flyers take a 7-0 lead here at Alexander Stadium. Mark, classic Marion Local drive. Well, two really nice passes to Victor Holscher in there, plus a nice run by Justin Knopf. Yeah, Adi had a good run in there, and, of course, the touchdown run by Heitkamp. So Marion Local will kick off to Ansonia. And uh, you knew those kind of drives were coming. You knew Marion Local figured it out. Now they've got to play defense and keep this lethal running game from Ansonia on the sideline. Structure out to Ohio scoreboard. Makes it 7-0 Flyers. So Mills with the kick. Deep kick down the left side. It'll be fielded at the five-yard line. This is Weiss as he feels at the five. Gets up to the 25 to the 27-yard line. That's where he'll fall short. And that's where the Ansonia Tigers will take over. Well, as we talked about during the break, Ansonia with the football here. Marion Local will get the football first in half number two. So this is kind of an important drive, either to put points on the board or certainly not give Marion Local time to score here yet in this half. If you want to, if you don't score, that's a great point, Mark. If you don't score, you at least want to flip the field and make Marion Local drive the ball. With 4.25 to go, you want to believe that they can uh, take some time off the clock here. Well, the Flyers only have one timeout remaining in the half as well. Tigers have all three. So Weiss gets the pitch, and he is taken down in a great play by the Marion Local defense. They were Johnny on the spot. And I believe that's number 42 for the Flyers. I believe that's 42. Did I see that right? I don't have a 42 on my list. I don't, I don't list. either, but I know he made a good play that time. <laughs> he did. Looking for the uh, official program here. And there's not a 42 in the official program <laughs> as well. So somebody's got a New Jersey on this evening. We'll try to get that at halftime. I'm telling you, that's 42 right there. <laughs> That'll bring up second and 14 from the 24-yard line. I wonder if it's Partington because it certainly played like him. Burns is going to keep it himself. Looks to throw the ball off to the left side, and he overshoots his intended target. His intended target was number 25, Ethan Riker. As we said earlier, Nick Burns doesn't throw the ball much. 32 of 58 this year for 459 yards. Well, and, uh, and that, Daniel, sorry, didn't no, mean to interrupt right. you there, but that incompleted pass and the clock stopped, they need a first down right here. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. So that'll bring up third and 14 from the 24-yard line. 3.39 to go. Burns comes under center. He's got two backs off to the left side. Or excuse me, right side. They got a man in motion. He's going to pitch it back off to the left side, and he has hit hard, and that's number 21, Zane Henderson. And not much of a gain at all there. And there you saw the defense from Marion Local, Johnny on the spot. That will bring up that fourth down you talked about, Mark. That clock continues to run under 319 here, fourth and nine from the 29-yard Well, line. and if the Flyers had a timeout, they would have used one right here, but that would have given them none to finish up the half. So the, the Ansonia Tigers get a chance to run a little time off the clock. Weiss the punt again. Yeah, Griffin Bruns on the right side is back deep, as is Victor Holscher. And though, 
Good kick, kick. over top wow. of both of them. That is going to take a huge bounce. <laughs> Griffin Bruns picks it up. He's off the right side looking for a block. He's got to cross the 40 to the 50, cross midfield. And you want to talk about making Whoa. lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> but that's, that is what you call out kicking the coverage, Danny. <laughs> the out kicked the coverage. He went back, circled up, picked up the football. Great run back that time of what could have been a really bad field position for Barry Local there on the 40-yard line. Now the plus side or the 48-yard line, plus side of the field. 2.47 and a timeout remaining. And we just got a text in from our uh, one of our cameramen. 42 is Amire. Amire. So okay. you know, he has a different roster than we do. So he's got the good ones. Well, right? camera guys. <laughs> camera guys. You can't. We, got, we got some good ones, don't we? Oh, we got some great ones. They, they, they killed the food. They absolutely killed it. <laughs> Here's Marion Local, first and 10 from the 48. Knopf is in the gun. He's got three receivers off to his left and a single receiver to the right. He's going to keep it himself. He'll go across the 50 to the 45. He cuts back to the 40 and about the 38-yard line is taken down, about a yard short of a first down. They used trips to the left. That took three defenders out of the formation. Gave him an opportunity to run to the 41-yard line. Picked up seven. Clock continues to run with 2.28 to go. Marion Local continues to lead. Knopf's going to pitch back to Kyle Otte. Boy, he was met in the backfield. And he fumbles the ball, and it's recovered by Ansonia. Another turnover from the Marion Local Flyers. Ansonia, the recipient of this one. Looks like Trevor Hemmerich was the one who came up with the football. And Ansonia is going to get the football back with three timeouts left. 2.16 to go, and that is the second turnover from Marion Local. An interception in the first quarter and now a fumble here in the second quarter. He got hit really good that time. He did. You're absolutely right. He got hit hard. So here come the Tigers with a chance to tie this one up. Ball sitting at the 48-yard line. Burns goes under center. He's going to keep it himself. He rolls off to the right, throws across the middle to Weiss. Weiss makes the catch at the 50-yard line, a pickup of about five yards. Positive play on first down. Boy, they, they'll, they'll that, use that Weiss, pass did yeah. not have a lot on at that time, but he got it to Weiss to midfield. Yeah, they'll use him in a lot of formations, Mark. They'll bring him out of the backfield to catch the ball, and you're right. Nick Burns doesn't throw the ball a lot. There was an effective toss. That'll make it second and three from the 50-yard line, 145. 30, 32 of 58 on the season. Ball's on the yeah, turf. The he ball went, was pitched. There was nobody there. <laughs> You're right. And, and it looks Marian like Loco. Marion Loco will recover. You're right, Mark. He pitched the ball back, and there was just nobody there. Well, 21 at that time, he is uh, uh, Zane Henderson. He was out setting the block, and Ethan Riker was the running back. I think he pitched it to the wrong guy. I think you're absolutely right. So back-to-back -back turnovers here at the end of the second quarter. Marion Loco's got a chance to uh, go down and score again with 135 to go. Let's see what they do here. 47-yard line again with one timeout remaining. And out here in the slot is Victor Holscher. Watch nice. number two. <laughs> I was going to say, Holscher in the slot. And in the far left, Andrew Pullman. Knopf's going to take it. He's going to roll off to the left side. He's going to keep it himself. He'll go across the 45, back to the 50, and get closer to the 44-yard line. Close hurry to up. first down. Yep, a little hurry-up offense. Yeah. There's no timeouts left, so they're hurrying it up with 121 to go. He's got trips off to the right, Holscher off to the left. Knopf's going to roll to his right side. He's going to throw off to the right side. He's got Kyle Otte out there who takes it across the 40-yard line for another home and insurance first down. And Otte wisely got as much yard as he could and then hopped out of bounds on the far side of the field. To the 39-yard line, picked up nine. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 39-yard line with 1.10 to go. Still a box of chicken sitting out there, Danny. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I devoured mine before the game started. Well, I did too because Jacob and, and uh, his buddy were in here, and I was afraid <laughs> they were going to get it before I did. Oh, Jacob and Zach, two great guys, huh? First and 10 from the 39-yard line, 110 to go. Knopf is in the gun. Low snap. He's going to throw the ball deep down the middle. He's got Holscher out there in the connection. Oh, Ooh. he dropped it. Victor Holscher, it looked to me like he had it, but we were shielded by the defensive yeah. backs, and he just dropped it. Defensive back just got a hand in and knocked it loose from him. Just a little bit of contact as the ball arrived. It did so legally was that contact. 
Good pass, though, right? Yeah, where Holscher coming across the middle on a post pattern. Great pass and a great pass design there as Holscher got free in the middle. And a great defensive play by the Tigers. That'll bring up second and 10 from the 39-yard line. Still 64 seconds left. Yeah, that first uh, seven, eight minutes went really quick. And <laughs> we're kind of dragging here. But the local or the Maryland local Flyers trying to put it in the end zone. Second and 10 from the 39. Knopf's going to look across the middle. He's going to throw. He throws off to the left and overshoots Victor Holscher. Had him wide open, just a little bit high. That play took a long time to develop. Holscher lined up on the right side of the formation, had to come all the way across the field. He got bumped at the line of scrimmage and then had to come all the way across the field and just kind of threw the timing off a little bit with that one. We'll go third and 10 from the 39 with exactly 60 seconds on the clock here. Marion Local leads 7 to nothing. Danny Holbrook, Mark Shine from Alexander Stadium on the campus of Piqua High School, or close to Piqua High School. I know the high school is just off to the right here from the stadium. Might be Andrew Pullman time. Here's Knopf. Nope. He's going to keep it himself. He goes across the 40, flag. and there's a flag down. Yep. That's going to be holding. They'll bring that one back, or so it appears where the flag was thrown. We'll have to wait and see here. Yep. Yeah, they're going to call holding against Marion Local. That'll back them up further. Yeah, because they were going to be in four-down territory with an opportunity to make a first down. They're going to take them back. Uncharacteristic mistakes tonight by the Flyers. They lead seven to nothing, but they've had a couple holding penalties, a, a two turnovers, just not what we're accustomed to see. Give uh, Ansonia a little credit, though. They've uh, done a nice job of keeping Marion Local at bay. Got to get all the way to the 29-yard line, so they need 20 on this play. Third and 20 from the 49-yard line. Knopf is in the gun. He's got two receivers to the left and two to the right. He'll take the snap. He's going to throw to the right side. He's got a man out there. And it's a low catch, but it's connected to Kyle Audi, I believe. That's Kyle. No, that's number number 15, excuse me. That Griffin is Griffin Bruns. Yeah. Bruns. We've talked about him quite a few times tonight. That's going to bring up fourth and 13, and I don't think they're going to punt it here, Mark. Well, why should you? Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've got a team that doesn't strike deep anyway, even if you should not make it on this particular play here at, from the 42-yard line. They'll go fourth and 13 from the 42-yard line with 50 seconds to go. Knopf is in the gun, two receivers to the left, one in the slot. He's got a single back to the left. Knopf's going to look to throw the ball. He winds it up. He throws it deep down the middle. He's got a man out there, and it is knocked down. He had number 10, Andrew Pullman, out there, but a great job by the Tiger defensive backs. Pullman was coming across the middle of the field, and I think that's number 18, Wyatt Spencer, yeah, who got right. in there and was able to knock the ball loose. Uh, another guy, I think Bruns was actually, or uh, Burns, the quarterback, was actually there playing some safety as well, and a couple of guys made a break on the ball, and it falls incomplete. So Ansonia will take over with 43 seconds to go. And they've got a scoreboard here, Mark, that they've got the oh, game yeah. on the scoreboard. And it is just incredible. The clarity and this whole facility is first rate here. So here come the Tigers. Burns will go under center. He's going to hand the ball off to the third man through, and there's nothing there. He'll lose a yard or two. Weiss, the ball carrier. Clock continues to run. And Sonia, timeout. Uh, and Sonia, timeout. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take our final timeout of the first half. You're watching high school football on WOS. 36 seconds to go here at Alexander Field. The Marion Local Flyers continue their lead of 7 to nothing over the Ansonia Tigers. Danny Hobart, Mark Shine, and it is second and nine from the 43-yard line. Burns will go under center. They need something quick here. No, hand, no, he's going to keep it himself. He's under heavy pressure. The throw, the toss goes up to the sidelines, and he was really under heavy pressure, Mark. Well, Carter Jones picked it off at about five yards out of bounds. He was just getting rid of that one because of the pressure that came up the middle. That'll bring up third and nine from the 43. Not a lot of scoring here in the first half. Marion Local, their only touchdown of the game. Burns will go under center. He's got Weiss and Zane Henderson in the backfield. He's going to flip it back to Weiss and maybe, maybe a yard. And he is taken down. And the clock stops. That's who called the timeout. Did Marion Local? Yes, they did. Marion Local will take a timeout. Want to get to make them punt this time? 
That's exactly what I think they're going to do, Mark. Uh, Marion Local gets here, Mark, by defeating Cedarville 69 to nothing, Tri County North 63 to nothing, and last week, of course, they took out their MAC rival Minster 28 to seven. We had an opportunity to do that game, Danny. That was a wonderful high school football game. Uh, you know, that was what 14-7 at half. That was a great game. All credit goes to that Minster team. They they were outmanned, obviously, with their quarterback not playing. Yep. And I thought Niemeyer did a great job. He and did. their kid, look, Marion Local did a great job, but Minster, to their credit, really hung tough. Well, Marion Local had that big drive late in the third quarter, in the early part of the fourth quarter, to make it 21-7. Then had a pick six to make it 28-7. A really good football game between two MAC schools who've now won 152 <laughs> state championships. Congratulations to the Bremen ladies who won the volleyball tournament last weekend over Tiffin Calvert, which you saw here on WOSN. Mark, where do you get enough wood to build trophy cases for that? Well, they, got, they have one trophy case off the gym just for state championships. <laughs> How about that? That's something. He had Sonya back in punt formation, so uh, they will punt the ball away, and it will be fielded at about the – well, 15, it's going to roll to about the – oh, it stays in bounds. bounds. Yes. It's going to roll to the goal line. Are you kidding me? And that is exactly where they down are at the one-inch line. It, he could not have got that no, closer to the not. goal line. He could not have got that closer to the goal line. 53-yard punt with a great roll that time. Flyers got to get wedged the ball out of the end zone. A safety could cost them here. Yeah, if I'm Marion Local, I'm just pushing that ball forward with a little sneak action here and doing nothing else and letting that clock go. So first and ten from the one-inch line. I say inch because it's right against the goal well, line. Well, a really nice job covering it. The football as well to just let it roll as far as you could without getting it into the end zone. They're going to catch the ball six yards deep in oh the end goodness. zone. Oh, my goodness. Knopf is in the gun. He's got a receiver to the right. He's got a man in motion. Knopf's going to throw as he rolls to the right. He's going to throw it deep down the Holscher. middle of the field. He's got Holscher out there, and he's got a reception. Wow. Made it to 45. And Marion Local has life as Victor Holscher holds in the 45-yard connection from Justin Knopf. Got to get there right now. There are no timeouts. <laughs> they line up quick. Clock's running at four seconds. They're going to spike it. That's going to give them one more play, Mark, with well, one second to go. There, there is a well-coached football team, Danny. If you're in a shotgun, you cannot legally spike a football. Sure. So he knew smart enough to get up. They all got up there on, in time. They got it under the center. They spiked the football. And that, that's as good as you can get. And now Holscher's got a chance to run down the middle of the field or perhaps Pullman and maybe get points on the board, maybe get a, a penalty sure, where you sure. can kick a field goal. How about just that? shows you the mentality of the Flyers being on the one-inch line and still going after the home run play. So here's the Flyers. They've got four receivers off to the left and to the right, one single back off to the left. Knopf is in the gun. One second to go here before halftime. Knopf's going to get the ball. He's going to look across the middle. He's going to throw it as far down the field as he can, and it's going to be intercepted at about the five-yard line, and that's where that will end. So after one half of play from Alexander Field on the campus of Piqua High School, the Marion Local Flyers lead the Ansonia Tigers 7-0. We'll have second half, seven half, excuse me, second half action right here on WOSN. We're back here at halftime at Alexander Stadium where the Marion Local Flyers lead the Ansonia Tigers 7-0. And, Mark, not a lot of offense here featured in the first half. The, 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 the Flyers end up getting a touchdown after a rough start. Well, they did. They only had the football for just a couple of plays in the opening quarter. Um, you know, they had the punt block that ended up being recovered by Ansonia. And then Marion Local ran a couple of plays through an interception. That They just never got off to a good start. Now, they are up 7 to nothing here at halftime, and they will get the football first, Danny. I, in a way, I'm impressed by what's happened with Ansonia. They have run the football, at least on their opening possession, very, very well. And we'll see what type of adjustments, because we had known for a long, long time Marion Local is one of the best halftime adjustment teams out there. Sure. And you look at Ansonia, Mark, they've got two turnovers in the yep. first half. They got an interception. They got a fumble recovery. They got the blocked punt for a first down. So they've done some things well defensively. Yeah, they really have, and they've held the Flyers uh, you know, to just the seven points. Of course, part of that, Danny, is they've, they've had the football so much, particularly in the opening quarter, that the Flyers didn't really have a chance to do much in the first quarter. Now, uh, the Flyers have had three turnovers. The second one probably doesn't count. It was that long pass at the end of the half, just trying to, you know, just to make something happen before the end of the half. But they've had an interception and a fumble, and, and the penalties on both sides have hurt them as well. At halftime, Mary Local leads the Ansonia Tigers 7 to nothing. 
we come back, we'll have second half action right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Alexander Stadium here on the campus of Piqua High School. Tonight's Marion local premier sponsor is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. Also tonight are first down sponsor is Homan Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, members of the Wayne Insurance Group, with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. Hey, let's do one more thing because we spent some time at halftime. Number 42 for the Flyers is Bryant Meyer, 5'9", <laughs> junior. Made some good, good plays in that uh, opening half, and we had to do some checking around. Even the PA guy didn't know who he, he was. Say, we got it all figured we out. We finally though. got it figured out. So, so and Sonia will kick off the Marion Local, and Marion Local bunched up there yeah. in, a, in a kind of a different formation. Well, that's because of how the, the, uh, the kicking team is. <laughs> They'll spread out now. PA works here really good, if you notice that. <laughs> loud, loud music. That'll be fielded by the up man about the 30-yard line. And that's Audie. He's going to get a hole, and he is going to go. And he is going to go down the left side. He's got one man to beat, and he's going to be taken out of bounds at the five-yard line. Kyle, Audie. And what a genius move by the Flyers as they move Adi on the third line and he makes a scoop and almost a score. Well, as you know, they don't kick the ball on the PAT opportunities. They don't have a really good kicker that time. It wasn't going to go deep anyway. So coach put Adi out there where he could field the football and they are in business right away. And Mark, that's got to be something they uh, noticed yeah. at halftime. That is a genius move. And that puts the Flyers in our red zone, our Burke Petroleum red zone. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. The football is right on the 10-yard line, Danny. They cannot get a first down. So this is not in the t er, excuse me, the I formation. He'll swing it back out to Adi. Adi cuts back to the middle. He got to the five, to the four, trying to go forward, and he'll go down about the three-yard line. So Kyle Adi uh, scoops it up on the kickoff, and they want to get him in pay dirt. Well, they started him out on a wing back position. Then they pitched the ball to him with everybody out in front of him to block. Got the ball all the way down to the three-yard line, so a seven-yard pickup. That'll go second and goal from the three-yard line, 11.30 to go. Marion Local leads 7 nothing. Ethan Heitkamp time. <laughs> You're right. Heitkamp is dotting the eye in the eye formation, and that's who gets the ball as he goes through the end zone for another innovative office solutions touchdown. It's two plays on the first drive of the second half. The Marion local Flyers take a 13-0 lead. Yeah, in 42 seconds, Danny, thanks to the great <laughs> kickoff return. Unbelievable. Marion local Flyers, a two-play scoring drive as they take it right down the field, and they go up 13-0 with 11-18 to go. Now they'll tackle on the extra point. Of course, this is Carson Bills, who's had a wonderful year, so much so that he was second team all district as a special teams player. Snap is back. The hold is good. The kick is up, and it is good. With 11-18 to go, the start of the third quarter, the Marion Local Flyers, the number one team in the state of Ohio, has a 14-0 lead. We're back here at Alexander Stadium with 11-18 to go. The Marion Local Flyers lead 14 to nothing on the Structure Outdoor scoreboard. Mark, when you look at Ansonia, look, they, they, they average a lot of yards per game, but they're not a quick strike offense as they keep the ball on the ground. This, this is trouble right now for them. They, they certainly need to do something positive with this possession because the momentum now is all on the flyer side of the field. The big kickoff return by Adi down to the 10-yard line. Two plays, high camp goes in, 42 seconds off the clock and it's 14-0, that they could drive the football down, score, make it 14-7, but a quick out right here, that would be good news for the Flyers. And Carson Bills will tee it up and kick this one off. Weather's held steady here tonight. No rain and uh, mild temperatures and the wind blowing a little bit. A little cold for me, but uh, fans look happy and bundled up. And Especially here if you're on the flyer side of the field because the wind's at your back. Right. On the Ansonia right. side, you're going to get a lot of that breeze in your face this evening. 
But at least the rain stayed away we had earlier today. You look at this stadium. It, this oh, has got to hold six, 8,000 people, wouldn't you say? It's a, it's it a wonderful a giant place. Yeah, stadium. It really is. And Pickwa Indians here and the whole Pickwa community support this very well. Well, the Pickwa Indians and the Troy Trojans have one of the biggest rivalries in the United States of yeah. America, not just Ohio. So here comes the Ansonia Tigers, first and 10 from the 20-yard line. They'll hand it off to the second man up, and nothing going there at the line of scrimmage. And that was Weiss, the ball carrier. We talked about him in the first half and all his fun yardage he's had this season. He truly is the heart of this team. I think Randley made the tackle that time. Picked up a couple, perhaps, hard-earned yards. Mark, uh, this just in, Marion Local's going to have a really good basketball team this oh, year, Oh, yes, they are. <laughs> So <laughs> two of the better big kids oh around. Oh my goodness! I just thought of that when I was looking out of the crowd. I'm thinking, my goodness, their basketball team is going to be fantastic. Second and eight from the 22, and again nothing. Going two runs, no yardage on each attempt. That flyer defense may have figured something out at halftime because they are Johnny on the spot. Lost a yard back to the 21 yard line. Here it is, third and nine. And it's so a critical play, I think, for Ansonia. And they've got third and eight on the or third and nine on the board mark. But I got to be honest with you, yeah, that first ball, that first movement, there wasn't much there. I don't know how they gave him a yard. <laughs> That'll bring up third and nine from the 21 yard line. WSN coverage of high school basketball. Ladies start what next weekend, right. I think, right. right? Burns will go under center. He's got two in the backfield with him. He's got two receivers off to his left. He's going to throw it in the air off to the right side or left side excuse me intended target was number 12 Trevor Hemrick and that ball sails wide it'll bring up fourth and nine had a couple of defenders out there that time Landon Arling who was defensive well co-defensive player of the year in the Northwest District and a couple other guys out there cause, causing problems it comes a punt so this will be Victor okay. Holscher on the left side of the field back and number 15, Griffin Bruns. They are they are lined up on the plus side of the field. And a high snap, and it's going to be fielded by Holscher. Or he's going to let it bounce, excuse me, and it's going to just die right at midfield, the 50-yard line, and that's where the Marion local Flyers will take over with a short field. Thanks to the incompleted pass, <laughs> and Sony had the football for less than a minute and a half. And here are the Flyers right back with the football on the 49-yard line. So we'll go first and 10 from the 49 with 9.47 to go. Mark, the last loss by Marion Local. Mm. And you know when that was? I do. <laughs> back to New Bremen. That's right. The year New Bremen won a state championship. This Here's is Drew high. Laws. Yeah, Drew Laws, a big 10-yard gain. Drew Laws, we haven't called his number much tonight, but he's going to pick up Another home and insurance first down. You're right. It was 2021. New Bremen defeated him 24 to 17. Yep. Seems like an eternity ago. Of course, the last Mac loss was to Minster back in 2019. That was a 27-26 game. Knopf's going to bring it to the right side, and he's going to pitch it out. Here goes Kyle Otte. He cuts back to the 30, to the 25. He's dragging defenders all the way up to the 22-yard line. My goodness, Kyle Otte. You want to talk about yards after collision. Yes. Kyle Otte was dragging people with it. That he did. Back-to-back -back first downs. Home and insurance first downs to the 22-yard line. 16-yard pickup. Heitkamp got a good block that time, too. And this is what we expected from the Marion local offense that they've figured it out here in the second half. Knopf is in the gun. He's got Kyle Lottie off to his right and three receivers to the left of him. First and 10 from the 22-yard line. Knopf's going to fake the pitch. He's going to keep it himself. And he is taken down in a nice play by number 25, Ethan Riker. The shoestring tackle mark, but he saved maybe a touchdown. Yeah, they did because if he gets past him, he's got a clear shot to the end zone. I thought maybe perhaps he was going to pull it up that time on a rollout because he had high camp one, or excuse me, high camp Holscher one-on-one, -on -one, but he chose to run the football instead as the play call was. Back to the 24-yard line. Got to bring up second and 12 from the 24. 8.30 to go here in the third quarter. Marion local leads 14 to nothing. Flag. Flag comes down. Yep. Handoff was to number 34, Drew Laus, off the right side. And they're going to call another mm -hmm. holding penalty. 
That is three on Marion Local tonight. I don't think I've seen three from them in a year, Mark. That's uncharacteristic. Well, and the, the coaching staff is questioning. I'm not sure whether they're questioning the officials or whether they're questioning their players. Like, what are you guys doing out there? Yeah, and well, one or the other, there's some. <laughs> yeah, the, the coaching staff, you're right. They, they looked a little dumbfounded at that call, but uh, that's what the officials will go with. Either way, the football's back to the 34-yard line, and they need to get to the 12 for a first down. Bring him second and 22 from the 34-yard line. Knopf is in the gun. Now he's got two receivers to the left and two to the right. He's going to take the snap. He's going to keep it himself. Quarterback oh, draw boy. right up the middle for a huge gain, and he's still on the move. And he'll take it close to the 15-yard line. What a great play call, Danny. <laughs> a, did you see that? It just parted. Yeah, well, just parted the ways. It's almost like a, a, a screen pass to himself. Obviously, it was a draw play. But they let those uh, defensive linemen, they funneled them wide. The, the offensive uh, wide outs were running down the field. That took defensive backs deep. Tonight's instant replay is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe. Chicken and lima, Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Third and four from the 16-yard line. Knopf is under center. He's going to go high camp off the left side, and he is close to a first down. Let's see if he picked that up. He is just a bit short, according to the official call, but not by much. To the 13, need to get to the 12. And they are in the Burke Petroleum red zone. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available, 800-776-3097. This would be a huge stop this time if Ansonio is able to stop right here at what? Got Partington in front of Heitkamp. First big decision of the second half. They'll hand to Heitkamp. He goes off the left side, gets it easily, and he goes into the touchdown. Another wow. innovative office solutions touchdown. Ethan Heitkamp, touchdown number 21 on the season. And third one this evening. He got a good block on the left side of the formation. Partington got a hit, and then he went in from 13 yards out. Just leg strength at the end. That'll make it 20 to nothing with 6.49 to go. Marion Local comes out of that halftime tunnel absolutely on fire. Carson Bills will try for the extra point with 6.49 to go. Snap is back. The hold is good. The kick is up, and it is good. With 6.49 to go, the Marion Local Flyers extend their lead to 21 to nothing. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Back here at Alexander Stadium, Mark, 6.49 to go. The Flyers take another one into the end zone. A nice scoring drive. Uh, yeah, it was, Danny. They went 49 yards, six plays. They took 2.58 off the clock. Heitkamp with his third touchdown run. This is exactly the way Coach Goodman wanted this half to start. The big kickoff run, short touchdown drive of 10 yards. Uh, stop them, punt, punt, get the punt at the 49-yard line, go in and score. It's 21-0, and we're seeing the Flyers playing more at their peak than they did in the first half. You saw Ethan Heitkamp with the ball in fourth and one, and you just expect yeah. him to go across the left side, maybe fall down or something. And he's just drug just, bodies just into the end zone. Keep right on going. That's what he does. And I said 21 touchdowns. I think he's at 22 now, Craig, and 19 yeah, that's coming right. into the game. That's correct. Yeah. And so that ball will go out of the back of the end zone, and, and Sonia will take over at the 20-yard line. So I'm looking through here my play sheet, and that is – Bills has put three out of his four kickoffs this evening into the end zone. So we take a look at the Western Ohio Athletic Conference, and it's made up of our Canaman, Sonia, Tri-County North, Twin Valley South, National Trail, Tri-Village, Preble Shawnee, and Bradford. So if you're familiar with those schools, we've talked about a few of them here on WSN in the past. Bruns is going to pitch the ball back to the right side, and just about a yard pickup, that was... Number 21, Zane Henderson, as he is taken down by a host of Marion local flyers. Try to run that student body right sweep that time. They did get three. You see Meyer got in there. Good thing we got his, uh, his number <laughs> right. straightened out at halftime in there. Brian Meyer, 5'9", 165, junior. Brian Meyer, we apologize to you and your family. We didn't have the correct number, but uh, we got you now, buddy. So 6'18 on the Structure outdoor scoreboard, second and seven from the 23. They'll pitch back to the left side. And again, that Marion local defense is Johnny on the spot as they smother up Ethan Riker, the 6'2 senior tailback. I think that was Arling on the bottom of that play. 
And now Marion Local doing what Marion Local does best, keeping yep. you at third and long. And look, third and seven doesn't sound like a lot, but when you don't pass the ball often yeah. like Ansonia, this is real trouble. Typically, they run little out patterns, try to get a back out of the backfield. Their leading receiver coming into tonight had just eight catches. Trevor Hemrick had eight, as did Ethan Reichert. So it's not some team that throws the football well. So Bruns is going to keep it himself. He rolls to the right Twice. side. And it is almost Ooh. picked off, and it went through the hands <laughs> of two Marion local flyers, and it juggled around there. Boy, if they picked that one off, Mark, they walk into the end well, zone. Well, one of them was Heitkamp. He had a chance. To, <laughs> they had the receiver bracket at that time. Heitkamp had a chance at it. Weiss had a chance at it, but it looks more like a punt opportunity kind of to take place here. Let him bring up fourth and seven from the 23, and you're right. And Sonia will and, have to punt the ball away. And here is uh, Bruns and Holscher setting up again right at midfield. They'll go to the 50-yard line. Boy, one of these – and the ball goes oh over boy. the punter's head into the end zone, and he's going to try to kick it out, and it's blocked, and it is picked up by Marion Local. And I believe they're going to have to wait for the call. Touchdown, Touchdown yes. Marion Local. Wow, you got to be kidding me. The second block – or excuse me, the second miscue on a punt tonight, and this one goes in Marion Local's favor as they get another innovative office solutions I think, touchdown. I think Drew Laws is the one who ended up with a football in that mad scramble down there, but they got the block punt and Laws touchdown. Well, whatever Coach Goodwin said at halftime, it sure is working because they've come out on fire and uh, look, they're going to take advantage of every opportunity they can on that mistake by Ansonia. And really the first mistake we've seen Ansonia make tonight with the high punt, or the high, excuse me, the high snap. So Bills will come out for the extra point. Kick is up, and it is good. With 5.13 to go, the Maryland Local Flyers continue to build that lead 28 to nothing right here on WOSN. Well, Mark, can we call that a oh. one-play scoring drive? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not <laughs> sure it's a drive, but it was certainly a, a high snap, a blocked punt, and then Laws kind of outfought everybody in that scrum in the end zone to come up with the football, and it's 28-0 Flyers. And they've done all that in just a, a little over five, six minutes of this half. And, and the look on the, uh, the, the visiting crowd from Ansonia, Mark, uh, coming yeah. into this game 13-0 with a prolific offense, and they're, right now they're just getting shellacked here in the second half. Well, they were down 7-0 at halftime. They're thinking, yeah, we're in this. We good, yeah. And we, we, yeah. And, boy, have the Flyers really responded here. <laughs> Barry Local said, not so fast, my friends. We're still the number one team in the state. And a deep kick there would go into the he end zone. did it again. He did it. He's got a fantastic leg Yes, there. he does. Well, For the third time this half, and so it's going to start on their own 20. We've said it before, but this Marion Local program, they do it time and time again. They are 13-time state champions in the state of Ohio, Mark, and uh, Tim Goodwin is cementing himself as one of the greatest coaches in Ohio high school football history. That it is. They won it back to back to back. And, well, 22 and 21. They won it in 19. And a good shot here to win it in 23. So here come the Tigers. They'll pitch back to Weiss. Nothing going there. Maybe a and yard. Danny, you know, last week when we did the Minster telecast, we talked so much about their skill players being juniors, but their offensive line, Adam Winter is a senior, but Isaac Mullenkamp is a junior. Luke Webker is a senior. Excuse me, Winter is a junior. Webker is the senior. Mullenkamp's a junior. Ungren's a junior. Colton Ar Arns, the center, is a junior. <laughs> So, Man, they so basically the whole line. They back. got just about everybody back. They're going to graduate. <laughs> Luke Webker and the rest of them are coming back. I don't believe they graduated. <laughs> there they try to go off the left side with a little counter play. That's number 21 for the Tigers. Zane Henderson, not much working there, but probably the best run they've had this half as they go for about four yards, and they'll bring up a manageable third and five from the 25-yard line. Yeah, if you're Ansonia right now, let's get a first down. Let's get a first down. Let's, a let's try it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. If if we can go down the field and get some numbers on the board, you know, at least make it 28-7, feel like we're competitive a little bit but, uh, and, and raise our spirits a little bit right now. But this is a big third down for them. Yeah, if Marion Local can uh, hold them here, they're going to get the ball in again in great field position. So here's Burns under center. He's got two off to his right side. 
They go in that bunch formation. They'll go Weiss up the middle, and he's going to pick up a first down. And a they nice do. run there by Keegan Weiss. And that's exactly what they do, Mark. They move the chains. Pick up at home and insurance first down on the inside handoff to the 34-yard line. So he got to nine on the play. Keegan Weiss, Mark, went back to the huddle. He is holding his shoulder, and it's dragging him. Uh, he's still in the game, but he come back to the huddle, and he looks like he's in some pain. And you can see him yeah, holding that exactly. left arm, yes. and you just wonder. And he can't put it on the turf, and he'll go to the right side. And I don't know if you saw that play, but Weiss was supposed to chip the linebacker, and he could only use his one side. So, And now he's holding that arm up there. Yeah, I was watching the, the wide receiver run his route that time, Trevor Hemlick. He's got eight catches for 199 yards and three touchdowns on a little out pattern uh, that time, and uh, obviously incomplete. Well, the last person that the Tigers can afford to lose is Keegan Weiss. On both sides of the ball, yeah, Danny. Yeah, he absolutely is a fantastic offensive threat and a great defensive player. So he's in the backfield again. They're going to pitch the ball across the right side. And there's a flag comes in, and i got to believe that's another holding call. Weiss went to the left side of the formation that time and, and didn't make contact with anyone. And no. surprise, surprise, another holding call. Yep. About number 38 for the evening. <laughs> there have been a bunch of them. There have been a bunch of them. The football is right at the 40, so it would be third and about fourth. The Flyers will take this penalty. Nobody's left this one, Mark. The crowds are still really nice here. The Ansonia crowd, they brought a bunch of people. They did. And, you know, it doesn't look like it because you're looking well, at a, like a 4,000 <laughs> side, <laughs> seat side of the stadium they, over there or whatever it, yeah, it is. And a there's a big thousand, crowd, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, everybody in Ansonia is here tonight. So that will bring up second and 14 from the 30-yard line. Clock continues to run. They'll go off the right side with number 25, Ethan Riker. Picks up maybe, maybe two yards. Do you wonder if Coach Hall maybe doesn't have a good look at, at uh, Weiss and said, you know what, we're going to just deco him for a while and not, Could be. not force him to handle yeah. the football. Let's see right here what he does on this play. Third and what, 13? Third and 13 from the 31-yard line. Mark, we have played the entire second half on this side of the That's field. That's correct. <laughs> it is, and it, we're sitting a little off to the – right of the 50-yard line, folks, and uh, we've not been across the 50 for Ansonia. Third and, third, third and 18, they're going to pass the ball, and he is hit immediately. He was hit hard in the backfield. Burns went down, and he yeah. gets up slowly, and that's going to bring up fourth and 13, and Ansonia's going to have to punt the ball away. Trying to get to Weiss on that little pass coming out of the backfield that time, well covered, and then, of course, the pressure to the quarterback and couldn't make the successful completion. And we will remind you that if Marion Local puts another score on the board, that will make it a continuous clock with 2.31 to go here in the third quarter. The punt is up, and it is hits at about the 44-yard line. It's going to take it in. Sonia bounce to about the 42-yard line. The way and those hit, Danny, you almost got to watch yourself as a Marion yes. Local because that ball could kick up and hit you pretty easily. It's not going as deep as most punchers are used to, to have to get back and block when, one. Yeah, when Holscher let the ball go down on the turf, he I, to me, my liking, I, I wanted him to get away from it. He, he was really close to it. but He and all of his teammates. They he, were, he's got they, a little more speed than I do. Well. So. <laughs> this tape measure has well, a little more speed than I do. He's got a lot more speed than most people do. He is really fast. That's right. So here come the Flyers, first and 10 from the 42. Knopf is in the gun. He's going to look to throw the ball. Speaking he's, of fast, he's going to he throw just outran everybody. Yes, he did. Victor Holster down the middle. He takes it to the 20, cuts back on that spin move. Are you kidding oh, me? Oh, boy. Victor Holscher takes it in for another innovative office solutions. Mark, that had Braxton Miller written all over it with a spin move. Yeah, well, first of all, he, he got open coming over the middle of the field. Then he got a, a pass right on time. Third, he got a really good block from Griffin Bruns. Then he made that last play on the reverse pivot and the score. 58-yard touchdown pass. Makes it 34 to nothing with 2.09 to go. Well, Jacob, the score's getting a little closer than I said to you. I got made fun of by Jacob O'Neill at halftime. I thought this would be more of an offensive output, but uh, I'm turning out to be somewhat of a Nostradamus, wouldn't you say? Well, 13 <laughs> seconds to go, 58 yards. <laughs> <laughs> 204 to go. Mary Local leads 34 to nothing. Bills on to tack on that extra point. 
Snap is back. Hold is good. The kick is through. 156 to go. The Marion Local Flyers. Running clock when we come back. Running clock when we come back. 35 nothing. Well, the music is pumping and the scoreboard is lighting up as Marion Local takes a 35-0 lead with 1.56 to go. And, Mark, you are correct. As soon as we start the clock back up, it will not stop unless there is an injury or change of possession. Well, look at what Marion Local's done in the half. The big kickoff that they had to start from Adi, touchdown run, height camp. Then they go on a short drive of 49 yards, height camp run, block, punt, touchdown. Then they get the really nice touchdown pass to Holscher and his cut that he made that they have scored about every way you can here to start the half. So Bills will kick it deep and it will go through the end zone. And Ansonia will take over. Again, kicked it in, into the end zone, start on their 20. So as noted, the clock did stop with the change of possession, but it will not stop unless there is a injury or a timeout, correct? They already, already got it down to one, one, one because yeah. once they, it was signaled yeah. to kick the football off, the time ran off the clock, so yeah. down to 136 already. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Marion Local leads 35 to nothing. They'll hand it off the right side, and nothing doing there. Maybe a yard, maybe a yard and a half gain. Henderson, your ball carrier. St. Henderson, and you are correct. You know, we don't see Weiss carrying the ball through the line of scrimmage right now. No. They tried to get a pass to him on the last play of the previous drive. Instead, they pick up a yard with Henderson. Give the young man credit for trying to hang out and stay in the yeah. football game, but he is not 100%. No, he's not. I don't, I don't know that he's on the field right now. I was going to look when he came out of the huddle. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, he's right there, there in the middle, is. I yeah. believe so. But he's that left shoulder looks like it's bothering him a little bit. They'll go back across the field. They'll pitch it back to 21. That's Zane Henderson. Henderson, your ball carrier. Clock continues to run. Weiss got a decent block on that play on the sweep. Picked up four to the 25. The bring up third and five from the 25. Play clock's at 24. Game clock's just at 30 seconds, so they'll have to get a playoff here before the end of the third quarter. Burns will go under center, third and five from the 25. They'll pitch it off to the left side, and nothing doing there. Maybe a pickup of maybe a yard, and that will be the last play of the third quarter. So at, oh, the clock stopped. Why did the clock stop? Not I think the Flyers sure. called timeout. Okay, okay, you're right. Marion Local calls a timeout. They'll take a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school football on WOS. We're back at Piqua, where tonight's first down sponsor is Holman Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group, with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. You like saying Chickasaw, don't you? I do. <laughs> I like saying Versailles, too. <laughs> Those are beautiful communities. They really are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good people, nice communities. And here are the, the punt, and here are the Flyers again sitting up right around midfield. <laughs> I, I, Mark, I, I've said it all night. I keep waiting for one of these two to take one back to the house here. And the kick is up, and Holscher's going to get it, and he'll call for a fair catch and right about the 49-yard line. So with six seconds to go here in the third quarter, the Marion Local Flyers will take over at midfield, leading 35 to nothing. Mark, do we have details on uh, if everything holds well, where they will play next week? Well, that came out today yeah. uh, that the state announced. A little bit unusual, kind of a nice know, thing right? for them to I do. I, I was very pleased they did that, but the OHSAA announced today yeah. that the winner of this game would play the winner of uh, Patrick Henry and McComb, and they would do so at Lima Stadium next Friday evening. Close to home forward to that. And that'll do it. The third quarter yep. wraps up. So after three quarters, the Marion Local Flyers lead 35 to nothing. We'll have fourth quarter action right after these messages. Welcome back to Alexander Stadium. Excuse me for the start of the fourth quarter. Marion Local continues to lead 35 to nothing. They try to extend that lead and Move on to round five of the state football playoffs. This is Height Camp as he goes up the middle and is taken down, and a nice tackle there. Yeah, good tackle by Jared Schmidtmeyer. 
Came off the left side of the defensive formation. Lost a couple back to the 50. Tonight's Marion local premier sponsor is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. So that'll bring up second and 12 from the 50-yard line right at midfield. Knopf's going to hand the ball up to Heitkamp, and boy, he busts through the hole close to a first down, a gain of about nine yards. Heitkamp just up, does a great uh, job. Yeah, up back in the formation that time. The kind of position that normally in a Marion local thinks of being a blocking back, but that time he was allowed to carry the football down to the 42. Picked up eight. Bring him third and four from the 42, 10.50 to go on the running clock. Knopf's got her back to the right and to the left. Two receivers, one to the left, one to the right. He's going to throw to the right side, and he's got a man out there. Easy pitch and catch. And that reception made by Andrew Pullman. And boy, the DB played 10 yards off of him. Yeah, they did that time. That's another Pullman insurance first down. He threw the football before Holman was even out of his break, so it was a really well-timed play down to the 31, picked up 11 in the first down. And that'll move the chains. 10-18 to go. Had five innovative office touchdowns this afternoon, this evening. Knopf goes under center, and he'll bring it up to Holman right through the middle in a big run of about eight yards. Well, they've got uh, number 45, Ethan Heitkamp, or 46, Ethan Heitkamp carrying the football, but also in the football game is 45, Parker Hess. And they kind of look like Hess might be the running say, back that like time, it. but they keep handing it off short, so we're down to the 22-yard line. 9.47 to go on the running clock. Structure outdoor scoreboard. Knopf goes under center again. Got to believe they're going to run the ball again as they're having great success on the ground. They'll go right that was the Parker middle. Hess. And Parker Hess yeah. as he continues to carry in Sonia Tigers. And he'll go to about the 10-yard line. Into the red zone they go. The Burke Petroleum red zone. She said that a few times tonight. And yet another home and insurance first down to the 11. They can't get a first down inside the 10-yard line without scoring. Continues to lead 35 nothing. Danny Hubert, Mark Shine from Alexander Stadium on the campus of Piqua High School, the beautiful football facility here in Piqua, Ohio. Knopf is going to, well, <laughs> <laughs> number 50 from Ansonia. He decided to walk across the line. That's Jordan Troutwine, the six foot, 233 pound senior. Tried Try. to get a jump on the ball. Yeah, he tried to guess the snap count and wanted to make a play and anxious to do so for his team and just. Got to cost a little quick, cost him five. Clock continues to run. We're down to 8.30 and rolling. Parker Hess in the backfield. Parker has uh, eight touchdowns this year. This will be a sweet play. Knopf's going to hand the ball to play. And again, off the left side for another innovative office solutions touchdown. Braden Pavlaka make with that run. Braden Pavlaka, we haven't called his name tonight, but he's on the books, and the Flyers lead 41 to nothing. And they have scored every possession here in this half. Coach Goodwin's got to be happy about what he's seen yeah. in the second half, Mark, because these kids came out of that locker room on fire. 48 yards on that particular drive, took them six plays. Of course, with the running clock, a little bit misleading how much time they took to take that particular drive. Bills comes on for the extra point. Snap is back. Hold is good. The kick is up. And it is good. With 7.31 to go, the Marion Local Flyers flexing their muscles. They lead 42 to nothing. Another healthy scoring drive, Mr. Shine. The Marion yes, Local sir. Flyers put one on the board to make it 42 to nothing. 48 yards, six plays. Palaka with a score. Any chance Palaka is an well, underclassman? Well, I think he is. Yeah, if you just look here, he happens to be. Well, actually, he's a senior. Oh, five, he's a senior. 5'7", 145. <laughs> yep, good for him. Absolutely. Get on the scoreboard. Did a great job. Marion local flags are flying high right now as they have 
came out of the locker room and scored 35 unanswered points this half. That ball just dies at the at the goal line, and they'll bring it out, and they're going to be taken down at the one yard line, and it just keeps getting worse for Anthony. Mark, he didn't have well, a choice. He, he didn't, didn't have, have a choice. choice. It didn't get to the end zone, unlike the other kickoffs here this half. He had to bring it out, and by the time he made the decision to make that move with it, because it was to get in the end zone, the Flyers were down there with great kick coverage. My goodness, you want to talk about a tough situation. You're down 42 to nothing. The kickoff dies at the goal line, and you got to figure out a way to go 99 yards. I'm looking at the score sheet. The Flyers have given up all of seven points in the postseason, four wow. games. Now, we're not quite through this game, but still, seven points in almost four games. And I was wrong. They have to go 98 yards. I misspoke oh. and said 99. I've got to get my eraser out yeah, and change my place. I was going to say, they've got it marked at the two-yard line. Marion Local licking their chops to maybe get a safety here in the backfield. Burns will go under center. And he'll hand it off to the first man up, and that was Weiss. And Weiss gets a maybe, maybe half a yard to about the three-yard line. Bring up second and nine from and, the three. And so he's gone, gone three and punt, three and blocked punt. And they actually had a drive that got him six plays before they punted, then three and punted. So they certainly have had not much success here in this half against the Marion Local Flyer defense. And look, we, we talk a lot about Marion Local. And look, they're gonna, and the end Sonia is going to have a great year. They're yes. going to end at thirteen and one. You run into a buzzsaw, but nothing to hang your head about. This is a fantastic year for the end Sonia Tigers, and uh, they've played uh, an outstanding football season this year. The ball gets loose, and it goes out of bounds, and I don't believe anybody recovered it. The beanbag came out at the five yard line. You know, I wish those things were a different color. I do, too. They, I do they, too. they look yep. so much like a penalty flag when yep. you first see them. The orange and the yellow colors kind of yeah. run together uh, a little I, bit, but they will be to the five. I wish they would make them a complete different color. Clock continues to run down to 534. Man, local leads 42 to nothing. They just brought Hess in to play defense on this play, too. Had a couple of good runs offensively the last possession. Third and seven from the five-yard line. Burns is going to hand the ball. Oh, no, he kept it yeah. himself, and he's taken down, and he falls backwards. I think no. he kind of bobbled yeah. the ball a little bit and could, didn't, wasn't cleanly held a play yeah. that time. Ball's back to the two. That would be a very difficult punt position, and particularly the way Weiss likes to do a little bit of rugby punt sometimes and roll to his right before he kicks it. A little bit dangerous this time, and look where the Flyers are setting up, right around the 30-yard line. 30-yard line. And they've had a little bit yeah. of trouble with the snap here as of late. So he is standing on the back line. Kale, and yeah. Kale Nagel is one of the returners this time, right at the 30. He wears number four. And a low line driver. Going to go to him. Nope, yeah, they're go. going to let it bounce wisely. So the clock continues to run. Nice job by the Flyers retrieving the ball there. And that will put the ball at about the 38-yard line. That's where they'll take over with... 426 to go. They lead 42 to nothing. As we said earlier, Marion Local will advance to round five. They'll play at Lima Senior Stadium, Lima Spartan Stadium. They will play the winner of Macomb and Patrick Henry. And we don't know who's going to be that recipient to face the Mighty Flyers, but uh, by the end of this broadcast, we'll know. If you want to talk about how good the Flyer defense has been in this half, this will be their fifth possession, and four of them will start on the plus side of the field. And the one that didn't start it on their own, 48, 42, excuse me. <laughs> Pretty efficient. Got a new quarterback in, Braden Mesher. Braden Mesher will go under center. Hand the ball off. Go off the right side for a gain of about two. That is number 45 there. Parker Hess with the carry. I think they're going to be happy to just uh, run this one out and an entire line change yeah. for Ansonia. And good for them. Yes. Good for them. They brought in some uh, second teamers, and those kids are going to remember this forever. And an outstanding job and an outstanding season for the Ansonia Tigers. I think the other part of that, Danny, is you give your seniors who are leaving the field off the defensive side a chance to get an ovation from the home, from sure. their crowd. Absolutely. And a well-deserved one. Great season for them. I'll bring up second and seven from the 35. They'll pitch it back to the left side. This is 45, and he'll go down the line, and he will take it in for another 
Innovative Office Solutions touchdown. 45, Parker Hess, and he makes it 48 to nothing on the Structure Outdoor Scoreboard. 35-yard run for Hess. That Parker Hess's ninth touchdown run of the season. It's also over 500 yards rushing now, and the, that, that's kind of an odd number because they spread it out so sure. much. We've got a new PAT guy, too, as uh, Thomas Winter is in to do this kick. So Thomas Winter will try to attack the extra point. We'll make it one less than half a hundred on a bad snap, and uh, they're going to try to field it, and he's just going to fall on top of it. And if you had 48 in the office pool, you're the winner right now with 2.40 to go. The Marion Local Flyers lead 48 to nothing. You're watching high school football playoffs on WOSN. Back here at Alexander Stadium with two minutes and 40 seconds to go. Marion Local comfortably in control, 48-0, and another nice scoring drive, Mr. Shine. Yeah, they did. That was just two plays to go those 38 yards. And, of course, Parker Hess had both of the carries, so he had 38 yards total and a 35-yard touchdown run. And the only oddity of the whole second half is that Marion Local did not have a good snap on the, uh, the PAT attempt. And other than that, they have been pretty much perfect here in half number two. So 2.31 to go here. And Sonia, as we said earlier, they have cleared the benches now. They've brought all their reserves in, so good for them. And, uh, we've got a lot of reserves on the field for Marion Local as Marion Local gets ready for week number five next week as they move on for their quest for a 14th state title in program history. That ball is going to fall short at the 15, gets picked up, and they'll be taken down and pushed back to about the 13-yard line. That's where Ansonia will take over. I think Parker has had to tackle. I think he did, too. To the 50. He had to wait a long time for that ball to settle so he could pick it up and make a play with it. Again, we want to thank our premier sponsor for Marion Local tonight, OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. In fact, I want to thank all our sponsors tonight, Structure Outdoors, Lee's Famous Recipe, Holman Insurance, Innovative Office Solutions, and Burke Petroleum. We can't do this without the wonderful folks sponsoring these telecasts. We appreciate that each and every Friday night. It's like the quarterback is Cade Shellhouse. Cade Shellhouse will go under center. And he's <laughs> he got knocked down, but the, the ball moved forward for about four yards. I think the ball went to Marion Local. And it did. It, it was fumbled, and Marion Local will take it. And I will be surprised, Mark, if there's anything but a kneel down here with 146 to go. Well, the only way that the coach would say not is we've got a chance to get some guys some game reps. Sure, but other, sure. Other than that, I think you're right. Let's see what coach chooses to play. I know you'd like to get uh, – you know, some experience for some of your guys right here. They practice and earned sure, that right. Sure, absolutely. Here's Mesher in to play quarterback. Five, 1165 pound sophomore. We're going to be at Lima Stadium next week, right? We want to get Mary Local that's and right. State Semi. At least that's the plan. If Spectrum leaves us alone, let's just do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's Mark Shine, everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Watch, tell us how you really feel, Mark. <laughs> Open up, Mark. Uh, You're so reserved. Yeah, I know. There you go. <laughs> Just what you call, Danny. Uh, victory formation for the Flyers as they'll take a knee. So, Mark, I, I want to ask you just your thoughts. How do you beat a oh team my. like this? And, and look, I don't think anybody has answers because they've got 13 state titles. <laughs> yeah, they do. And, well, obviously, you know, you're going to run into some really quality competition. You, you need to be able to control the line of scrimmage against them, and that obviously it's very, very difficult. And then they've got so many weapons uh, offensively. The quarterback has played extremely well, of course, all year long in Knopf. They've got, what, four or five running backs. Yeah. They've got two good wide receivers at Holscher and Bruns. Uh, they, they just have a package right now, and they're extremely well coached. They're disciplined. And remember what Coach Goodwin said last year? Every day we chase excellence. Right. And right. when you go to practice every day and you chase excellence, this is the kind of stuff you end up with. Yeah, I talked to Coach uh, Goodwin a couple years ago. I got to interview him after a game. And, you know, what's the best part about your job? And he said the, these kids just respond every yeah. week to us. And that, that's awesome. So. 
That'll do it with 25 seconds. The clock continues to run. The Marion Local Flyers move on to round five of the Ohio High School football playoffs where they will meet the winner of Patrick Henry and McComb at Lima Spartan Stadium next Friday night. And we will telecast that game. Mark, your thoughts on this win for the Flyers? Well, I think the, the Flyers went into the first half. They, they had some penalties in the opening half. They had some uncharacteristic turnovers in the first half. I think they were a little bit surprised that, uh, that Ansonia was able to run the football well on them in the opening drive. But then at halftime, they got it all straightened out. And th those final 24 minutes of this football game, the Flyers played extremely well. And that'll do it from Alexander Stadium here on the campus of Piqua High School. For our entire WSN crew, for Mark Shine, I'm Danny Holbrook, saying we'll see you next week for round five of the state playoffs. Marion Local wins it 48-0.